Hello, welcome to the Monday, September 3rd, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Amsterdam, Netherlands. When I recorded on Friday, I totally forgot that it's Labor Day today on Monday in the United States. Typically, I don't have a podcast, but since I announced that there will be one on Monday, I'll do at least a brief one today. Max security expert Patrick Wardle of Objective C published another blog post showing how custom URL schemes can be abused on OS X and Mac OS systems. What this is all about is the beginning of a URL. If the URL starts with HTTP or HTTPS, then of course Safari is launched by default. Well, a different software can register its own custom URL schemes. So for example, if a URL starts with Skype colon, Skype can automatically register it itself to actually then launch whenever a user clicks on such a URL. The problem here is that the registration actually doesn't require that the user launches any software. All the user has to do is download a zip archive and if Safari automatically unzips it. The zip archive now contains an info.plist file. Then any actions defined in this file will automatically be registered. And apparently this has been used in some advanced attacks. The attacker will trick the victim to visit a malicious website. That typically happens via a spear phishing attack. Once the user visits the website, then the download Download is triggered off the zip archive and then a custom action is registered to launch code. Once the user then clicks on a second URL that does take advantage of this custom scheme. So the problem here is that exploitation is very simple. The best thing you can do right now is to not automatically open save file types in OS X and Mac OS. This is not disabled by default in these operating systems. So you have to disable this in Safari. There may be other ways how this can be triggered, not just uh, via Safari, Overall, the real problem here is that these custom actions for these custom schemes are registered without any user interaction and really just by downloading, by adding the file to your file system without actually executing it. Now, when the user then clicks on the URL with the custom URL scheme, there is a warning message that does pop up, but the attacker controls a good part of that warning message. So it's very possible that this could be adjusted. And Patrick has some nice examples here to make the user believe that they're opening something harmless that they expected. And then we got an interesting bulletin from the industrial control system, CERT and Philips. Philips apparently did an internal audit on its e-alert software. This software is typically used to monitor MRI systems for the health of the system. And apparently it suffers from multiple exploitable vulnerabilities. One of these vulnerabilities in particular, the use of hard-coded credentials uh, could lead to a complete compromise of the system. Philips, of course, has released a patch. The reason I mention this is not so much that it's yet another vulnerability in critical medical equipment, but actually to give some kudos here to Philips for coming forward and actually publishing the results of the internal review they did. Quite often what I see is that companies do these internal reviews, then they release a new software update that fixes vulnerabilities that are never made public, which of course then means that users will not apply the software update because they have no idea that it actually fixes some critical security vulnerability. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.